All right, guys, so we're back with another video here today, and we're gonna be doing a review of a book called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Okay, so I gave this book a 10 out of 10, and it goes deep into your subconscious mind, and it explains the subconscious in a way that I've never really heard explained before. So let's get right into it, okay? So number one, Try not to judge others because what you judge in others is something you judge about yourself. Okay? So what you judge in others is something you probably judge about yourself. So if you want to kind of get out of this paradigm of judgment, you really need to step into a place where you're not judging other people. Now this might sound counterintuitive when you think about it, you're just like, wait a second, how does that even work, right? And the subconscious mind is, is always watching and listening to absolutely everything. So that's something to keep in mind. Your subconscious is watching and listening to absolutely everything that's happening. So let's use an example. Um, let's say, um, I judge someone, let's say for example, uh, and this is, you know, before I get into this, this is very difficult to kind of completely get rid of, right? Because like humans judge people, you know, without even realizing it a lot of the time. That's the thing is like a lot of this judgment is coming from a place where you probably are not even aware of it. And let's say for example, I see somebody walking down the street, I'm like, oh, this guy has a, an incredible head of hair, right? because that's something I see myself. I'm like, I don't have an incredible head of hair. So I judge that about myself. So I look at somebody else that has an incredible head of hair and I may judge that. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but you can judge people, you know, like, like a lot of us judge people a lot more than we actually think that we actually do, right? We judge people a lot more than we actually think we do because a lot of it is happening on a subconscious level. You look at somebody and you immediately make a judgment about them, about something, maybe their appearance, about um, what they're wearing or how they're acting or whatever it is. And as soon as you do that, the problem is your subconscious is always watching and listening. So now what happens is, let's say for example, you're in a public setting or something like that, you're always thinking people are judging you for those same things that you judge them on. So this causes you to, 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 to potentially be in your head more than you need to be and be worried about what other people are thinking or judging you about, right? And I've talked about this in past videos, but the, the number one goal you wanna get to is non-judgmental awareness. So you're aware, you see what's going on, but you don't have that commentary like judging, like, oh, this person must be thinking this, or this person's behaving this way because of that, or this, like, and it's a very difficult place to be at. I, I'm gonna admit that, you know, I have, I have struggles with this myself. It's very difficult not to do this, but when you catch yourself judging other people, if it's a harsh judgment especially, right? If you're judging them in a harsh kind of way, and if you catch yourself doing that, you kind of want to just basically, um, get back into the present moment so that you're not thinking and chatterboxing inside your mind anymore. You're kind of just, you have that non-judgmental awareness. And when you're present, right, when you're present and, and all you're seeing and thinking is nothing, right? You're not, I mean, you're seeing everything. You're not thinking anything. There's nothing. There's no thoughts going on in your mind. There's absolutely nothing. It's blank. That means you're fully present with this moment and you know, it's where I'm at right now, right? I can't think about something and then be talking at the same time, it's impossible, right? It's not possible, I can't, I can't possibly be thinking as I'm yelling at you guys on this camera right now. It's not, you know, a feasible thing, right? So that's where you wanna be without talking though, which is kind of interesting, right? When you think about it, you wanna be present. Obviously you wanna be present when you're talking too. Um, that's one thing, but you also wanna be present while you're just you know floating around and just maybe walking down the sidewalk, right? You see something and you get this urge to like maybe have some kind of commentary inside your mind, but you kind of shut that off gently and you 
focus on the present moment. A lot of what I teach on this channel is the present moment and letting go and detachment. And this is all tying up with that, okay? It might sound confusing to you, but once you practice this, this is something that literally needs to be practiced because your mind, you know, if you're really aware throughout the day, you'll see your mind is, you know, the thoughts that come up and like just sometimes you see somebody, there might be an immediate judgment that you might not even be aware of in the moment, but it's there, right? So you wanna get to a place where you're inside your head as, as less as possible. I don't know if that's like an actual word, but as least as possible, right? You wanna not be inside your head. You wanna be in this moment, not thinking about something, not judging anything or not commentating inside your mind about anything. And uh, that's a difficult place to be. It's, it's from my experience, it's, it's almost impossible um, to do that, but you can get better at it. That's the point, right? Let's say, for example, everyday life for you is, you know, um, going out and, you know, you always have commentary inside your mind. It's always a chatterbox in there. It's like you're, you're talking to yourself. You're judging things about others. You're judging things about yourself, whatever it is, right? Let's say like 80% of your, your day is filled with like you're inside your mind and you can't be present. You get to a place where it's 50-50. That's, that's a lot better life right? That's a lot better life where you get to a place where it's 80% that you're in the present moment where you're not really thinking about anything, not judging anything, not uh, commentating anything inside your mind. And in only 20% you are doing that, then that's an even better life, right? But the way our minds work, we can't really 100% just knock off all thoughts, knock off all commentary, knock off all judgments. I mean, like maybe you can, maybe there's a level that you can do that. I'm not there. Um, I, I don't really know anybody that would be there, but maybe if you're like a Buddhist monk, you can get there. But the point is you want to kind of sway towards the, the side of um, presence and non-judgment and no commentating as much as you can. Okay. So number two, this is a really important one, by the way, you must completely forgive everyone in your life to truly live a healthy life. So you must forgive everyone in your life to truly live a healthy life, okay? So if you're a human, if you're watching this, I assume that you are, means that you probably have some kind of trauma. Everyone has some sort of trauma uh, to some extent, you know, from your childhood, um, could be from your adulthood, whenever it is, there's always something there. There's some kind of trauma, something that kind of rattled you a little bit. Um, and in order to really live a healthy life, you have to like let be able to let go of those traumas and really kind of um, relive them from a third party perspective and, and look at them look at them ad objectively. So now. You might be thinking like, what does that mean? Um, you know, for me personally, I had a lot of little traumas, you know, in my childhood. Um, I call them little now, but in the moments while I was going for them, they were, you know, some of them unbearable, like very drastic. They seemed like it was like the end of the world kind of traumas. But now when I look at it objectively and I think back, I'm like, you know what? That probably wasn't that much of a big deal. I was just making it a big deal, right? So. What I did was to let go of these traumas further, um, there's a video I found on YouTube. Um, I forget the name. I forget the exact name of the video, but the guy, the guy's channel is actualized.org um, is the actual name of his YouTube channel, actualized.org, and he has a trauma release video. And this video is so powerful, so powerful. I literally went through like 15 hours of releasing trauma through this video. The, the video is like a, is about an hour and a half from what I remember. Um, and I did it one by one, all these little traumas that I thought I had and that were still inside my, my body and inside my subconscious, I released these traumas and I forgave people in my life that I was holding grudges against, right? And I forgave that. And it's very important. That's very important for you to move on and live a great life. And, and not necessarily because, and not necessarily because 
those people that maybe did you wrong um, deserved forgiveness, but it's so that you don't really suffer from it. That's more important than anything, is that you don't suffer from it anymore, right? So you kind of go through a process where you kind of relive. So the, the trauma release is basically a process where you kind of relive exactly what happened and the, and the emotions of what happened and you kind of set aside some time to do that. And then you kind of realize that, um, I mean, you basically realize that this person wasn't intending to maybe hurt you, right? Maybe they were intending to, um, maybe there was different intentions, right? Like this trauma at least kind of walks you through it. So you're basically in that moment. So you kind of visualize that exact moment of where you felt this trauma, but you see it from like yourself as you are now, if that makes any sense. So you're watching yourself, let's say when you were like eight years old experiencing some trauma, and you're watching yourself experience uh, this trauma, okay? And then you're kind of seeing it from a different perspective, from a different point of view than you were when you were eight years old. And you're kind of reliving that experience, but you're having now a different meaning to that experience. So it's very, very powerful. Highly recommend trauma release and to forgive anybody that, um, anybody in your life, you know, that's done something that, that you didn't, you didn't like or, or whatever it may be. Okay, very, very important. So we'll get straight to number three, okay? When you continuously expose yourself to your fears, the death of fear is certain. Face your fears. So when you continuously expose yourself to your fears, the death of fear is certain, right? So, so and I wanna like, I wanna just say, just to, just to kind of put it out there, you don't have to, like, like, for example, like I have a fear of like tigers, you know, like, or, or, or snakes or, or whatever, like a, a big venomous snake. You don't necessarily have to get over that fear because it doesn't add any benefit to your life, right? You don't have any, there's not any, um, there's nothing that, that like would improve your life. If, for example, like for me, if I got over my fear of like, you know, being face to face with a tiger, that does nothing for me. So there, there's no, there's no reason for me to do that, right? We're talking about fears that um, are more practical. Like, like for example, let's say if you have a fear of, you know, being assertive or something like that, right? Then you kind of face that fear. You you put yourself in situations where you're assertive, or you have a fear of, let's say, um, just trying to think of examples. Let's say, like, you know, I always come back to the public speaking. Let's say you have a fear of public speaking and you kind of expose yourself to that and you kind of push yourself to that and you try to public speak as much as possible, right? That allevi alleviates that fear, right? So um, anything you have a fear of, like the more you expose yourself to it, the more you're going to um, just be familiar with it. It's not gonna be something scary at all anymore after a while. I'll give you an example. This is something actually really cool to think about. I want you guys to think about this, okay? Think about the concept of sleeping. And, and you guys might be wondering, where am I going with this? Think about the concept of sleeping for one second, okay? We sleep every night. Let's say the average human sleeps eight hours every night. You're literally lying down in a bed and you're, and in a sense, you're dying for eight hours every single night. And it's not a big deal at all. Nobody thinks it's a big deal because we do it every single night. I want you to think about now in a universe where sleeping was something that only occurred like once every five years. It only happened once every five years now. Think about this. And you get to a point where you're like, okay, it's time to do that sleeping thing where I literally die for eight hours. I go unconscious for eight hours and I can't feel my arms. I can't feel my leg. I li you're literally gonna die for eight hours and you're doing this sleeping thing. Imagine that once every five years. Now you're gonna be like, oh my God, you're gonna be so scared of that. It's gonna be scary. It's gonna be scary. I promise you, if you did it once every five years, You'd be like, whew, you'd be looking at your pillow like, I don't know about this. Like this, this sounds terrifying to me. 
This sounds terrifying to me. But my point is the only reason why we're, we're not scared of sleeping is because we do it every single night. We're exposed to it every single night. All right. And even something as extreme as like, let's talk about like taking a shit, like something as crazy as taking a shit, right? You take a shit like maybe once or twice a day and it's just like comes out of your ass, just normal, you know, whatever, not a big deal. But let's say for example, in, in, in on, a, on a different planet where you're taking your shit once every three years and like, you know when it's coming. It's like, the, you know, a few weeks later, you're just like, oh my God, there's gonna be something coming out of my body. This is crazy, right? This is insane. How can this be real? It doesn't seem real, um, but it's just so normal to us as humans because we do it every single day and there's nothing to fear because we do it every single day. That's why there's nothing to fear is because it's done every single day, okay? So let's say, for example, let's go back now to the fear of like, let's say public speaking. Let's just use it because it's the most common example and it's the number one fear for humans above death. You can Google that. Number one fear is public speaking above death. So let's say you have that fear of public speaking, but now you do it every single day. Guess what's gonna happen? Eventually, you are not going to have that fear anymore. It's just gonna subside. It's just gonna go away. It's simply gonna disappear, okay? So that's the main point here. So if you expose yourself to things that scare you continuously, you keep, like, same thing with like, for example, if I did wanna get over a fear of like, let's say, um, let's say snakes, okay? Let's say there's like a snake like wrapped around my neck, he's dangling around my ears or whatever. Uh, or let's just, let, let's call it a tarantula. Uh, everyone knows what a tarantula is. It's like the, like those, you know, those big spider looking things that are hairy and fucking ah, disgusting, right? But let's say a tarantula, you're scared of a tarantula. And at first you watch, you look at pictures of a tarantula. You kind of get your brain used to it. You look at the pictures of a tarantula. Like, okay, I can deal with that. Then you watch a video of a tarantula, let's say like, you know, walking across the branch and every day you watch this video of the tarantula, you make your brain familiar with it. That's the key. You make your brain familiar with it. And then you watch the tarantula, videos of the tarantula crawling on other people. You know, at first you might be like, oh, this is weird. But then, you know, after you watch that every single day, you watch that video every single day, right? Continuously, every single day you watch that video. And eventually you get to a point where you're like, you know what? This tarantula video, it's not a big deal. Like it doesn't seem like anything. And then eventually you get to a point where let's say there's a tarantula, just you have a tarantula crawling in your vicinity, but like somewhere where you can't, uh, it can't get near you, right? Let's say it's like 10 feet away. The tarantula is just crawling around and then every day, I know this is not practical. You can't actually do this um, unless you actually like really wanted to and you set it up and you, and you paid money to like tarantula experts, but whatever. Um, we're just, you know, hypothetically speaking here, the tarantula's over there, it's just crawling around for like 10 minutes. You just kind of watch it, observe it. You just kind of get familiar with it, right? And then you do that every day, let's say for another month, like every day for another month. You're like, after a while, you're like, all right, it's a tarantula, he's walking around, doing a bunch of nothing, blah, blah, blah. And then the next month you get a little bit closer, you know, you get the point. You get a little bit closer the next month. And then, you know, you get to a point where you're really, really close to it, you know, a few months later. And then you get to a point where you kind of like, you're okay with kind of putting your finger on it. And you're like, wow, this seems somewhat normal. Like I'm not too freak out. Like the first day you might be freaking out. The, the second, third day, fourth day, fifth day, you're like, all right, let him crawl on my finger for like a minute. And then we'll, we'll, we'll you know, and that's it. Um, and then eventually what happens, you know, getting to the main point, what happens is eventually you're gonna get familiar with it. And eventually that tarantula is just not gonna be a big deal at all. Right? So main point being, whatever you're afraid of, and this has to be a fear that you want to conquer, okay? Then you have to kind of put yourself, not kind of, you have to put yourself out there, right? And, and face that fear. Like for me, uh, another actual fear that I had was flying on planes. I hated the takeoff, it made me really anxious. So what I did, I started going on a lot of planes. I've, I've, I've probably flown on like 200 planes in the last eight years. That might seem ridiculous to some of you guys watching this video, but 
that's what it is. And after I've flown like 200 planes, I just don't care. It just doesn't bother me anymore because I've exposed myself willingly to that fear and it's just subsided. Sometimes I'll feel a little bit of anxiety when the plane's going up, but it's really nothing that bothers me, um, you know, like it used to, you know, when I started with that fear. But, but yeah, that's the point. If any of this stuff resonated with you guys, first of all, like the video, uh, leave a comment, maybe something that you're scared of or anything we talked about here today. Um, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And then uh, if you really, really resonated with the video, then pick up this book. You know, this is a great book. It was an excellent read. Pick up this book. It's really interesting about the subconscious mind and how it kind of, you know, um, controls us without us even realizing it. So yeah, um, curious to hear your thoughts. If you, if you have read the book, just give me your thoughts or anything that you want to add because I had a lot more notes on this book too, but these are the main three I kind of wanted to touch on. So um, yeah, that's it. So I'll see you guys in the next video.